Hi, I'm Ross Mayfield, investment strategy analyst at Baird, and we are back for another weekly update with our friends at Strategus. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by partner at Strategus and head of the firm's macro and technical research effort, Chris Verone. Chris, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, Ross. It's great to be here again. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, appreciate you as always hopping on uh, to record with us to kick off 2024. And I thought it would be fitting to start with the first thing I read from you in 2024, which was the statement that the burden of proof here is on the bears. I was wondering if you could break that sentiment down for us and how you use it as a, as a guiding post for 2024. Yeah, certainly, Ross. But first, I'll just start by saying uh, to everyone, Happy New Year. Uh, this is, believe it or not, our seventh year uh, as part of this great Bear franchise. So we're incredibly thrilled and excited to start another year and come and see you uh, in your office uh, and look forward to being on the road and talking with as many of the advisors as possible. Now, as far as the market goes, and Ross, to your question, we use this language, you know, where is the burden of proof? Is it on the bulls or is it on the bears? I think it's certainly on the bears to start the year here. Uh, the trend work is still certain up the momentum surge we saw to end 2023 was impressive by any metric uh, if you look at things like new highs which we spent a lot of time using to gauge you know, how potent the trend may be this this absolute surge in new highs to end uh, 2023 when you have seen that stuff historically it has generally portended very strong returns when you're looking six or 12 months out in the future i think if there's a risk in the short term it's simply that sentiment is getting too hot we have this saying, you know, it's the uh, immutable rule of Wall Street. As prices change, so do attitudes. And I do think the attitudes are probably getting maybe a little too enthusiastic or a little too hot. That may be have to, you know, get dealt with in some type of a consolidation or a correction in, uh, in the first quarter. But I think generally speaking, the trends are good. Momentum is behind this market. I'd look to say 4,500, 4,550 as support on any pullback uh, in the first quarter. Yeah, it's it's funny how attitudes change when the market goes on yeah. you know, one of its best uh, two month stretches in, in recent memory. But, you know, accompanying all of those new highs and that breadth data is also what you've noted as a shift in leadership. So yeah. all of 2023, the story is about the Magnificent Seven and this concentration at the top of the market. And now we're seeing some life from some laggards, from the average stock. Could you talk a little bit about that and how it informs yeah. how you're thinking about 2024? I think it's a really important point, Ross. And as you often see in a new year, there's always a proclivity to want to make big calls about leadership changes. And yesterday, I think certainly to start the year when we saw a lot of the winners get sold and a move into to some of the laggards, that proclivity or that temptation is certainly there. But I want to emphasize something. This little change in leadership is not one or two days old. This has been happening for two, three, four months now where we have begun to see the average stock take some share from the top of the market. I think it's evident in really a couple of ways. Uh, the equal weight S&P has meaningfully started to outperform the cap weight. Uh, that's been true basically since bond yields peaked all the way back in mid-October. And I think equally as important is this shift back to the value-oriented names. The value versus growth relationship has turned up. That's been particularly true down the cap scale really since summer. So we're talking about five or six months of this. So I know it's tempting to say, oh, this is just laggard rallying. I do think it's more than that. Uh, I think it's been happening for a number of months and looks more than just a, you know, a, a, a move because of the change uh, in the calendar. Where I would focus on kind of in the value cohort, the improvement in financials over really the last six months has probably been the most important and impressive change in our thinking uh, and our work. We're talking about about 80% of financials are in an uptrend right now. It's one of the best readings we've seen for the group in about two years. It just gives us some more confidence that that's a sector where if you got a correction here in the first quarter, you'd wanna use that opportunistically. Yeah, and still under discussed, just if it's you know by, by the things coming into my inbox. So uh, a good call out. Um, I think that sets us up really well for 2024. So let's end here. What is something that you're watching maybe a little off the beaten path? Maybe it's a sector or industry, maybe it's yeah. gold, maybe it's the dollar. What's something that you're keeping your eye on that you think could be bigger than it might otherwise be for this year? So I'll give you two things uh, to think about, Ross, and you kind of alluded to a little bit of it here with both dollar and gold. I think they're related. I think gold strength, uh, basically for, uh, flirting with new highs in that you know, 2050, 2100 zone is a commentary that the trend in the dollar has changed. 
Uh, in the very short term, would it shock me if dollar bounced here? It wouldn't. It's oversold. But the longer term chart has really started to roll over. And you see it when you kind of go individual pair by individual pair, particularly a lot of these emerging market and commodity based currencies have improved. Um, and I think gold is a reflection of that. I think the turn in copper is a reflection of that. I think some of the improved performance from the metal and mining and basic resource and even chemical stocks reflects that as well. So that's kind of top of mind here as we kind of set sales for 2024 and kind of get the leadership and the positioning story uh, in order. The second thing I would just focus on, you know, in an environment where it certainly seems like the bulls are in control of this market, the trend is up, momentum is good, you always want to be aware of, you know, what could disrupt that or what could change the story. And I think the big question investors are debating is, at what level do falling 10-year yields, right, and they've gone from five down to 380, at what level do falling yields no longer reflect an easing of financial conditions, but rather actually start to suggest that there's real weakness in the economy? And I think the key to answering that question is not my intuition or your intuition, it's the market's intuition. And watching relationships like industrials versus utilities, right? Cyclicals versus defensives or discretionary versus staples. I think that'll give us clues if the move lower in rates or the breakdown in oil has more to do about the economy uh, than it is some easing of financial conditions. I think so far, most of those relationships are still in pretty good shape, but it demands constant attention uh, from us and certainly will be a feature of our continued work. But Ross, thanks as always um, for doing these. And as I said at the top, um, really look forward to getting out and, and seeing many of you uh, in person in your offices this year. Well, we'll have to get you a Louisville, Chris. But as always, thank you so you much bet. for the time and have a great 2024. Take care.